if you think President Trump claiming the judge in the Manafort case found no collusion was strange when she went out of her way to say the issue of collusion was not before the court, well, strangeness is no stranger to Massachusetts either. First, there was the case of Fall River Mayor Jazil Correa, who was indicted for fraud last October, but won re-election anyway in November. In December, city council issued an ultimatum, resign or face a recall, and the embattled mayor refused to back down. Then, fast forward to this Tuesday. When the city voted to both recall Correa by 60% majority and then re-elect him, though more than 60% of voters picked other candidates. Then there's a massive college admission fraud case brought right here in Boston. For every student admitted through fraud, an honest, genuinely talented student was rejected. After more than 33 parents, mostly white and all wealthy, were charged with paying bribes and committing fraud to get their kids into elite schools, is this affirmative action of a different sort? And let's not forget former Mass Governor, now Utah Senator Mitt Romney, and his bizarre birthday celebration. This Twinkie cake isn't the whole of it. Here to help us make sense of it all, we hope, is former State House Bureau Chief for the Boston Globe, Frank Phillips. Hey, Frank. Joanna Weiss is the editor of Experience Magazine at Northeastern. Hello to you. Michael Curry, former president of the Boston NAACP, now chair of the National uh, NAACP <clears throat> Ad Advocacy and Policy Committee. Michael, it's good to see you. Good to be Can here. I start with you? This Correa thing, there is something wrong with this picture. Picture. Is there not? Yeah, there is something wrong with it. I think, you know, we're seeing this nationally, we're seeing this locally, sort of a race to the bottom where there's no standards for our elected officials anymore. Um, and, you know, this is another example where voters decided that despite his crimes, alleged crimes, uh, that he still should stay in office. And the system was broken there, too, because it fragmented the rest of the voters who voted against him. I wonder if that could happen on another level. In any case, <laughs> I asked Joe Kennedy today on the radio, Congressman Kennedy, who represents Fall River, what he thought about this thing. Here's what he had to say. They selected the mayor to, to continue on his term, and I, um, I acknowledge that and accept it. And so, um, I respect the will of the voters. I, I do think that um, Fall River deserves some stability. So are you suggesting in there that he should step down, or you're suggesting the voters made a decision and should be respected? Um. I think I'm suggesting both. Okay. Actually, in October, he did say he should resign. What do you think should happen? Here? I mean, look, I, I think the the election happened. I, I kind of blame the Democrats for not getting their act together and putting Amen. only one person because mo the more than a majority, more than 60% of the voters did vote against him. They just let their vote. How about you? I love it. Another <laughs> great political story. Another one in the chapter of Massachusetts politics. I covered this kind of politics when I was learning my journalism. And, you know, getting indicted, federally indicted, it's a badge of honor. I mean, it just energizes your base. And I, I, so I understand it. I, okay. I get it. Uh, you know, up in Lowell, that, that's what I saw all the time. Uh, which is where he uh, started his career. You know, can we get to the what I think is the most important story this week, this whole college admission thing? And we've discussed every angle in this show, and I'll start. I'm embarrassed to discuss, not that, say, we didn't discuss this angle. Teresa Vargas wrote this great piece in the Washington Post today. Here's just one paragraph. Duh. Of course all those people who have blamed poor brown and black kids for taking the spots of, quote, more deserving white kids through affirmative action should have been looking closer who mm -hmm. really didn't earn their seats. Does this crack open this whole thing? She also goes on to say, if you're black and you're in an elite school, you must be a token. Obviously, you're not qualified to be there. Yeah, I mean, it's disturbing, but it's not new. I mean, these conversations go back to when I was on a college campus about legacy positions. Um, and black students, and I was a black student union president in college back then, we used to argue that it wasn't about affirmative action, that quite frankly, affirmative action started with rich white people and white students. Uh, and that they were the, mo the biggest beneficiary of those seats. Legacy positions writ large gives them an opportunity to step into these schools based on the family mm -hmm. relationships that have gone there before them, the donations to the schools. And quite frankly, when we have this conversation about affirmative action benefiting people of color, it's only created a crack within the diversity within those schools. There is not enough students of color, and that's one Am of the reasons Am I naive in hoping or thinking that this may cause us to hear less of that because of this? meaning this, of that unqualified black or brown kid? Are we going to hear that less? No, because or I, it's just going to... I think it's always going to be there because people... I, th there's a, a psyche that says if you're white, then you have to sort of defend the whiteness of being in a school. And the reality is poor white kids should be just as upset by the story as many others that are of color. People are getting into these schools that are not qualified. I challenge this all the time when people say, well, you need to be qualified to get these jobs. 
I don't give us a job or a seat in a school. Most white folks that get these jobs and these positions are not always qualified. It's about relationships and about access, and that's what this conversation is about. What was your major takeaway from the Lelling uh, indictment? Yeah, I mean, what this story really lays bare is that there is no even level playing field. So you've got the people, the elites, who are literally buying their way into school, but even in the middle class, you know, people who can't afford college or are fretting over affording college, they are still paying for SAT coaches, sports coaches. You know, the, there are a lot of things legally, that, of course, legally, legally, and it's not fraudulent, and there's nothing morally wrong with it, but every Every family is trying to give their kids a leg up. And this is the most extreme and illegal case of it, but everyone's playing with what they got. Would you put Charles Kushner in that category when he gave two and a half million to Harvard and a week later his kid Jared got in? Oh, that's the oldest trick in the book. So does anything come it. out of this? I mean, everybody, you know, people are talking about this, this points to the systemic problems and the admission pro uh, process. Almost everybody seems to be outraged whether they're indicted or not here. Does anything come of this or is this another short attention span no, the story? No, th this system was so, so deep and, and so elaborate. I, I think it's going to have a, a real conversation now and spark a conversation that really had been quietly going on where, like the Kushner case and others, I heard one the other day of another person giving several million dollars to an elite university in the greater Boston area. and. The mission officer, officer said, uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. Is that and trouble you, in. by the way? Yeah. Why? I, why? Schools need I, money. If it turns out someone's willing to give a few million bucks you get your and money the quid pro quo is no, your kid gets in, why no, not? No, because there's a lot of kids out there, whether they're minorities or just plain kids, middle class kids, working class kids who are struggling hard and trying to do it the right way. And you have somebody giving millions of dollars to the university so they, their, ch their child can get in without qualification. I know what the schools will say. What the schools will say is we get that those paying students, and that allows us to open up financial aid for kids who ordinarily wouldn't want to get in. I know that's the answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's essentially, yeah. Play, pay to play, right? We have this it is concern. pay to play. It's pay to pay play, to go. or really play not to pay not to play because some of them are claiming to be athletes that you know, they're not actually. One thing athletes. that's legal that Joanna mentioned very quickly, if we can, Michael, uh, you know, this whole thing, uh, I mean, I would pay for my kid and I can afford it to take a prep course for a college exam. Are public schools now going to feel to level the playing field? They got to provide that kind of thing to everybody. I think that has potential to be one positive offshoot of this. No? Yeah, yes? I mean, there are challenges to our whole system. Some is the access to the prep courses, and we know that depending on where you are in the socioeconomic status, the poverty level, you may not have access to those, to those courses. We know that some of this is systemic. It's about coming from poor neighborhoods, with poor housing, where the tax base is not enough to supplement 36 percent of our school systems in our wealthier communities are paid for by the tax base. If you're in a poor community across this country, you don't have that extra funding. Our formula is even broken. There is this hopefully will awaken us to how broken our system is and it creates the racial disparities that we have. Okay, from the sublime to the ridiculous, happy birthday, Mitt Romney. Look at this. <laughs> it's never gonna work, is it? <laughs> These are these are all wishes I'm getting. <laughs> all these wishes. That's right. They're all Twinkies. His favorite okay. dessert, apparently. He's blowing out individual candles. Now, Joanna, one of the people in this panel said to one of our producers, not enough people are talking about this. You would be that, <laughs> that person. Was me. So talk. That was me. What should we be saying? I, I think there's something about Mitt's psyche that is both bizarre and also <laughs> extremely charming. I don't know whether he was trying to sort of protect people from his germs by not blowing on the cake or whether he just felt the need to pick up each individual candle but I found that fascinating. You covered him closely. Here's a tweet today from Jeff Tydrick. Congratulations to Mitt Romney's staff for making the guy who strapped a dog to the roof of his car and owns a <laughs> dancing horse and has an elevator for his cars seem almost human and relatable. Does it? Uh, it, it, no, it's awkward. <laughs> I, I've known him. I just have known him, and he's always been awkward. Uh, he doesn't, you know, I, he says he didn't want to spread germs, and I can understand. He, yeah. when he was he governor, said he was sick. He, he wouldn't he touch sick, a legislator. No. He, he, you know, he couldn't put a hand, I mean, uh, Sal DeMaisi hugged him one time, the speaker hugged him, and he said, I thought I was going to get frostbite. <laughs> <laughs> you mind if I skip this for yeah, you and ask yeah. you another question? Yeah, go ahead. NAACP, you're the former Boston head. Yeah. You're now on the national board. Yeah. NAACP decides to pick the city for its convention in 2020 that just a year ago in the Globe, there was a poll that said was the least welcoming American city Absolutely. to African Americans. I assume you had something to do with this? I've been a part of the conversation, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I think credit to Mayor Walsh, who... Uh, 
uh, when we talked, he said, I'm, I want it here and I want to work to get it here. And I want to change that perception and the story about Boston and credit to Boston NAACP President Tanisha Sullivan uh, and many others who are, are working to make this happen. And to you. Congratulations. I think it's great. I think it's hope it's great for the city. Thank Michael, you. it's great to see you. Thank you. As well, Joanna. Thank you. Frank, thanks. Take care. Good to see all three of you.